a very good afternoon to one and all present over here in this meeting so today in this webinar we have our expert dr supandeep singh helen and uh, i welcome you sir to this webinar the title of his talk is amperometric assessment of polyphenols encapsulated in lipid waste nanotransporters and currently dr helen is working as senior visiting researcher in department of pharmaceutical education and research at riga state university you, it's, uh, it's helen <laughs> helen okay okay helen yeah latvia yeah and uh, his his phd his research interests include the design and characterization of lipid based nano sized drug carriers and during his phd uh, he has carried out from the university of ferrara italy and uh, he has worked on nano encapsulation of antioxidant molecules and uh, liposomal delivery of synthetic quorum sensing inhibitors to modify the toxicity associated with magnetic nanoparticles and transdermal delivery of blueberry extract and snail mucus helix complex during his 6 months stay at the department of biomedical sciences malmo university sweden he has carried out characterization of redox reactions in skin involving peroxide oxygen using a model based on a skin membrane covered oxygen electrode so beyond this he is having a good research profile he is having many research articles and review articles in reputed journals and uh, currently his research is based upon amperometric assessment of polyphenols encapsulated in lipid based nanoparticles so now i invite dr supandeep singh sir for his talk welcome sir uh, thank you dr patia for uh, inviting me in this uh, interesting session uh, me share my presentation yes sir you can share sir uh, sorry i don't have access to share wait for one minute sir mm -hmm. yes sir you can share now sir okay yes sir is visible you can start okay thank you uh, so uh, the title for today talk is amperometric assessment of polyphenol encapsulated in lipid based nanotransporters uh, my research already professor party i elaborate very well so generally we are working with the lipid based formulations including the lipid nanoparticles like uh, nanostructure lipid carrier solulipid nanoparticles liposomes and other kind of modified liposomes vesicles for uh, delivery of different antioxidant molecules for uh, therapeutic purposes and also for the diagnostic purposes in general uh, the techniques that are involved in our studies are uh, the designing of the different uh, lipid system which uh, went across uh, the electron microscopy if they are subjected to gels then uh, we carry out the rheological studies small angle x ray scattering in order to identify their internal structure <laughs> uh, cell line studies and interestingly skin impedance studies and amperometric analysis which will be topic of it Uh, so i would like to discuss about uh, the caffeic acid uh, we perform its encapsulation into two different kind of systems that is named liposomes and sln uh, considering the caffeic acid it has so many natural sources and uh, having very good uh, pharmacological actions and here we are focusing on its uh, potential to inhibit the radical generating enzymes so caffeic acid is hydrocyanamic acid which has a strong antioxidant power due to radical quenching activity uh, however it is uh, very much prone to degradation uh, in on exposing to different uh, environmental factor including oxygen light temperature and it needs to be delivered across the stratum corneum 
but its uh, administration is hampered by low solubility and saccharose stability. That's why we are here proposed the two different kind of system. One is uh, lipid vesicles named ethosomes, which is the combination of uh, ethanol and liposomes. Uh, the presence of ethanol into the phospholipid lamellar structure will make it more uh, deformable and flexible. On the other hand, we have solilipid nanoparticles, which have very rigid solid core. And uh, we are here to compare both the system because uh, it is believed and we found from research as well that uh, the system that contain lipid matrix, they have better blending with the lipids which are present in the stratum corneum in order to facilitate the penetration of uh, the active molecules. Concerning their uh, 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 structure, there are two figures. This is uh, the solid lipid nanoparticle having solid lipid core which is surrounded by the surfactant and the active molecule can reside in the core of the of these uh, nanoparticles on the other hand we have this uh, phospholipid bilayer uh, vesicles uh, which have a uh, capability to incorporate both kind of uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules and there is presence of uh, ethanol in the core and in the in adjacent layer of the phospholipids so overall objective is uh, to design both kind of system and to evaluate them for different kind of characterizations. Concerning the preparation and characterization of these nanosystems, uh, the SLN have been prepared by using hot homogenization and sonication method, while ethosomes have been designed using the cold method. Uh, so here is the com overall composition of both kind of systems. Concerning the basic characterization, the diameter of both formulations were remain from 200 to 220 nanometer. Uh, and also on addition of caffeic acid, no visible change happened in the diameter. Concerning the polydispersed index, uh, it was uh, below 0 0.3, which is acceptable for uh, monodispersed population. Concerning the zeta potential in case of unloaded SLN and ethosomes, it was uh, around minus 13 to minus 16. But on addition of caffeic acid, it transferred to positive charge because of uh, the positive charge on the caffeic acid. It also correlated very well with the pH, uh, where we can clearly see the pH has been shifted on addition of the caffeic acid. It, it has also this uh, ionic uh, environment, which has great impact on its encapsulation efficiency. In case of uh, SLN, we achieved uh, more than 80% of encapsulation efficiency, while uh, in case of ethosome, it was almost quantitative. It means uh, if we focus on these lipid nanoparticles, then almost 82% of the active content was inside the uh, vesicles, which we also uh, analyzed after performing its degradation, or we can say disaggregation using the strong solvent. And we found that uh, another fraction of 18% uh, uh, caffeic acid was uh, present in the aqueous phase of the SLN, which was very much prone toward the degradation. Then here are the morphological analysis. We perform TEM and the cryotem analysis on our formulations. In case of uh, SLN, they were little irregular and flattened. While in case of uh, ethosomes, the very clear multilamellar structural organization was confirmed. These results are also compared with uh, the small angle X-ray scattering. This is the technique where we can find out the distance uh, between two adjacent layers and in the end, we can confirm its lamellar organization. In case of SLN, uh, this, this strong peak show that the lamellar structural organization in case of SLN. And also interestingly, on addition of caffeic acid, there was no any change in their lamellar organization. While in case of ethosomes, it shows this uh, white peak shows that uh, uh, there is a lamellar organization but on addition of caffeic acid, there was a huge shifting in the uh, charge density and ultimately two different peaks were vi visible in that analysis. It means that there are, uh, it is uh, the multilamellar structure organization having caffeic acid inside. And uh, we can also say that uh, the whole of the caffeic acid was associated with the lipid part of the vesicles, which is also comparable with the TAM images. Next, we check the physical stability of both system. Uh, for six months at a 22 degree, we store them. 
and we checked the diameter and its chemical stability timely. We found that uh, the ethosomes were very stable in terms of uh, diameter, while 10% increase in the diameter has been noticed in case of SLM. Then we performed the chemical stability by HPLC method, and we found that calcium, uh, sorry, the caffeic acid in the solution form, it was degraded within the 30 days of time span, as it is already known that uh, it is very unstable molecule. And upon its encapsulation into SLN, we found that around 80%... Recording in progress. Sorry? Is it... Uh, should I continue? Yes, sir. You, you, could, you should continue. Oh, okay. Thank you. So in case of SLN, uh, in uh, the 30 days, there was more than 80% of the caffeic acid was available. While again, in uh, case of uh, ethosomes, it was almost quantitative. As I already mentioned that uh, almost uh, 18 to 20% of the caffeic acid content was associated with the aqueous phase of the formulation, which was highly prone to a degradation, but uh, the caffeic acid which was encapsulated was fully uh, retained. Also, another reason could be uh, because in case of the lipid nanoparticle, there is some harsh treatment, including melting of lipid homogenization followed by the ultrasonication. While in case of ethosome, there was no any hot treatment. There was no any harsh stirring. It was just uh, prepared using the magnetic stirrer by mixing of two phases. Then we compared these two formulations for uh, diffusion kinetics using a synthetic nylon membrane. And uh, we found that both kind of the formulation, they are able to retain uh, the diffusing out content of caffeic acid for long time, comparatively to the solution form. While I was doing all these uh, pharmaceutical technology aspects, I came across one publication from uh, Malmo University group they were also working with kind of polyphenols and uh, they have this kind of uh, oxygen electrode which is useful for the biochemical reactions. So basically this is the oxygen electrode which is being covered by the pork skin. When we immerse this electrode into the any buffer system according to the drug of choice, then certain kind of reactions takes place. Like first we inject uh, the free radical that is hydrogen peroxide which is uh, freely available on exposing to skin. And we found that uh, hydrogen peroxide can easily penetrate down into the skin and it can show its involvement with the certain kind of enzymes which are available on skin surface. And we found that this hydrogen peroxide, uh, these molecules in presence of catalase enzyme, they give rise to two molecule of water and oxygen. This oxygen can be quantified using the electrode. Similarly, if we put polyphenol into that compound in uh, the presence of other enzyme, for example, peroxidase, then this phospho, sorry, this polyphenol can be oxidized and uh, also there will be liberation of water. This change in current can be useful in order to identify how these molecules can penetrate across the skin barrier. And uh, if we show this diagrammatically after getting stabilized current line, first we inject the hydrogen peroxide molecule. Uh, on addition of hydrogen peroxide, there was increase in the reduction current. But at point two, when we inject the polyphenol, then there is also a decrease in the response. So in this way, we can quantify different polyphenols. And we propose them, we are working with the different kind of uh, nanosystem enclosing the polyphenol, and uh, they were happy to collaborate. Then I went there for six months and um, I started uh, the experiment with my ethosomes. And uh, the idea was using same technique, but uh, we are not uh, uh, exposing the polyphenol in a direct way, but we were, in, uh, we were exposing them in the encapsulated form. So first we normalize the uh, different skin to the different response. It takes like more than 20 different skin samples. Once we had uh, our average effect, then we injected our formulation and also the caffeic acid in the solution form. So first, when we injected the caffeic acid in the solution form, there was increase in the response as it was expected from other polyphenols. And then we tested caffeic acid with ethosomes. There was increase in the response. It was sudden increase 
then this response stabilized for some fraction of seconds and then it started showing its activity. It was little different behavior. Then we injected the ethosomes empty without caffeic acid. They also have shown same kind of response, but uh, uh, rather than showing the antioxidant effect, they started returning back to the baseline. We really wanted to look into that, uh, what is the possible reason for this kind of quick response. Then we went for the skin impedance studies. This is basically the diffusion cell, which are having uh, four different kinds of electrodes. These electrodes can measure uh, the skin resistance and the skin membrane, which are having the good integrity, their resistance should be more than three ohm. And here first uh, we inject uh, the citrate buffer saline in this donor chamber and we check the resistance, which was very low. But when we expose uh, this uh, skin membrane with uh, the formulation by replacing the buffer, then this, uh, there was sudden increase in the resistance. Again, we replace the formulation with the citrate buffer saline and immediately this resistance uh, came back to the original place. It means that these kind of formulations, they have reversible connection with the skin membrane. They can uh, stay there. They, can, they need some time to get blended with the skin lipids. And this phenomenon is reversible. The time for which they stay at the skin surface, they can block uh, the different uh, movements of uh, solutes and other molecules. Uh, the resistance was higher in case of ethosomes, as I already discussed. Uh, they are very flexible due to presence of uh, fossil dicholine. It is very much interactive to the skin lipids. So that's why there was a, a better blending and uh, the higher resistance has been recorded in case of ethosomes. Then we also compare the system for SLN. Unfortunately, this system didn't work with the SLNs. There could be different reasons. First of all, SLNs are very rigid nanoparticles. And if we go on literature, then we can find very easily that ethosomes, they are deformable, they can deliver the molecule, and they can also have very good transdermal potential. Unlike in case of SLNs, they have film forming occlusive effect due to its uh, strong uh, configuration. Then we try to understand this thing as well, like one system is responsive, but another one is without any response. Then we modified our electrode where we replaced the skin with the diocese membrane, but we tried to mimic all the inflammatory situation by injecting the catalase and peroxidase enzyme into that electrode. And here we found that um, the SLN has a good activity. The possible reason could be, uh, the, as I already mentioned, like uh, skin, uh, skin has a very great resistance for the movement of any other particles and formulation across the membrane. It uh, resists them for some time. So the formulation need to really interact with all the skin lipids proteins so that it can facilitate the uh, diffusion into the deeper layers. Also, if we compare both the techniques in the absence of a skin, uh, the response was very quick and recorded in very uh, small frame time frame as compared to uh, where we uh, put the skin the response was like uh, until for 70 minutes also this technique uh, give us possibility to calculate uh, the t lag means uh, the time taken for all the response and the apparent diffusion coefficient and here we can compare that uh, the time in case of ethosome was the highest comparatively hydrogen peroxide solution and the caffeic acid solution. These parameters are not comparable, but the idea is just to show the two different uh, kind of uh, formulation can be compared in with the different modifications. We also check this phenomena by using uh, intact skin and damaged skin. We compromise the skin with uh, the help of tape stripping. We perform around 10 tape strips and uh, we compromise the skin. So once the barrier was damaged, then there was no response, just like um, because there was no any resistance because the resistance only comes from the skin.
So concluding remarks are both ethosomes and uh, SLN can be used for topical formulations. They are very good at encapsulating the caffeic acid and uh, in order to protect it from any kind of degradation. Since the encapsulation efficiency is higher in case of the ethosomes because uh, the absence of any harsh treatment during the preparation. Also, ethosomes have better transdermal potential comparatively SLNs. And uh, skin cover doxin electrode was useful in order to identify the caffeic acid uh, containing ethosomes, while uh, ox modified oxygen electrode without skin was uh, helpful to identify the SLN. So therefore, there, uh, therefore, there should be the versatile strategies in order to test all these formulation at same platform, where their actual analysis and the comparison can be made in order to understand which kind of the formulations are better but still it is a very interesting insight into uh, you know one step ahead into pharmaceutical technology where we can actually check uh, the involvement of different uh, antioxidant defense enzyme which are present on the skin surface how they can involve in these kind of biochemical reactions and what kind of the response could be generated also we discussed about uh, the integrity of the skin which is very important and uh, from personal side, uh, when I was working different kind of skins, uh, also the limitation is uh, sometimes the there is intersubject variations. If uh, the animal have already kind of disease, then the response is completely different. Uh, then it is uh, much better if we calculate the resistance at first, and then we go for the experiments. Here are the references. I would like to extend my thanks to Professor Rita Cortesi, Professor Lida Vitha Esposto, Madalena, and Professor Taut Girdas Rizgas, and all the other contributors. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Supandeep, for a wonderful lecture. You have provided us with new insights that how these electrochemical techniques like amperometry can be used to quantify these natural products how it can be used to predict the antioxidant activity, damaged skin and healthy skin, how it can uh, study, we can study the skin impedance studies. So my concern is that, so what are the current opportunities in the field of natural products, sir? Like you have explained the caffeic acid as a, you have prepared the ethosomes. So what are other uh, natural products which can be explored in such a way in which you have carried out? As most of the time I spent in Italy and uh, Milan is uh, one of the biggest hub for the cosmetics in, you know, at international platform. And uh, I see a lot of groups are working with these natural products and uh, they are coming back. People are really worried about, since uh, it's not good to say, but these formulations are not also so natural because uh, in some extent we are using some synthetic uh, components like the surfactant and other things which are also toxicity concern. But still all the companies, they are very positive about, uh, you know, going for this kind of research. Uh, as I mentioned, we are working with snail slime. This snail mucus was provided by one of the reputed company in Milan. And not only for for antioxidant potential, we are also using them and testing them for uh, the biofilm inhibition, antibacterial properties. Mm -hmm. And uh, these ethosomes, especially the liposomes, uh, they are more uh, concern of interest because after this uh, COVID vaccination, people have more uh, trust in these kind of formulations. And there are also widening of so many opportunities by different countries. Uh, also, like uh, they are, they want to work on the interface between the industry and the research. So I think it is the one of the hottest topic at this moment. Okay, and sir, what is the reliability of uh, these electrochemical techniques like amperometry in quantification as well as in quantification of activity? So how much they are reliable, and what are the common drawbacks of these techniques? As I already mentioned, it highly depends on type of skin. Okay. Uh, I unfortunately I came to know about uh, this problem when I, when I was finishing up my stuff from Sweden, but okay. that's why I give uh, my suggestion like if you really want to work on the skin, then first uh, try to measure the skin integrity in terms of resistance. 
So with the resistance, you can try to normalize the skin. If uh, you try to make library of different skin membrane with different resistance, then uh, there will be less chances of uh, the variations and you can find uh, somehow reliable results. Also, I work with the mangiferin, which is another antioxidant from mango, and uh, it couldn't show any good response with uh, this uh, skin-covered oxygen electrode. So there are certain things which need to improve, but uh, we are working and we are trying for our best. And sir, what are the minimum requirements so that we can impose our students like MFARM students in such kind of activities? So which kind of instruments we require with us? Ampirometer so, is sufficient, sir? Yes, actually, it is the advanced instrument where uh, this uh, oxygen electrode, it is associated with certain software. Okay. But I don't think so it would be so expensive or difficult to install if you have uh, little knowledge. Because in the beginning, it was a little difficult for me because I was completely from pharmacy background and they were the yeah. you know, people from electrochemistry. But yeah. uh, within one month, uh, I managed to optimize everything. It's not uh, that difficult to install. Still, all the experiments are in uh, France diffusion cell, which is available in everywhere. So, okay, okay. yeah, it would be good insight if uh, we can think further. Okay, sir. Okay. So now the session is open to the audience. Uh, if anybody from the audience want to interact with Dr. Supandeep or if he or she is having any query, you can interact or ask him. Okay, fine. So thanks again, Dr. Supandeep. It is a, it was a wonderful lecture and definitely it will help our pharmaceutical students to think in a different way and to explore the nanotechnology in better way and get better results using these electrochemical techniques. So thank you for your time, sir. And uh, so uh, warm welcome, warm wishes to you from ISAF family. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you so much.